Good afternoon. Welcome to this online release event that has been organized by the Nordic Council of Ministers project, achieving the world's smoothest cross-border mobility and daily life through digitalization. My name is Minna Sinkkonen and I work here at the Finnish Institute for Health and Welfare and I'll also coordinate the work package two of the project. I will be chairing this event today. Today we are over 40 participants, almost from all of the participating countries, excluding Iceland. The original idea for this analysis came about in our workshop in, in October last year. And you can see the illustration on your screens, where we identified these hotspots where people are moving on a daily basis a lot. And we wanted to look a little bit closer what is happening, and today we will hear the results of the analysis. analysis. But let us uh, look through the program first. First, we will have the presentation of the cost-benefit analysis, and it will be done by um, analysts Erika Antila and uh, Katarina von Wert. And uh, after that, we will hear a commentary uh, from the Finnish National Agency for Education by project manager Riikka Rissanen. And then after that, we will go through your possible questions and answers that you are welcome to write on the chat. Please note that you need to add a nickname to the chat to be able to, to uh, ask questions and, and put up your comments. And uh, then after that, we will sum up and then go through what is going to happen next in the framework of the project. But uh, let us not uh, take any more of your time from the beginning, but uh, uh, I will give the floor to, to Erika and Katarina, please. Um, hi, so my name is Erika Antila and I'm here with my colleague Katarina von Werth and we both work for KPMG Finland and we started working on this cross-border data exchange project last fall. And now we are invited to give a presentation about the cost-benefit analysis uh, of cross-border healthcare data exchange in the Nordic and Baltic countries. So, before we deep dive into the study itself, I will give you a brief background of the cross-border data exchange project. So, the project started two years ago as a part of Finland's presidency of the Nordic and Baltic countries to produce a better solution model for data exchange. Uh, this project is divided into three work packages, which are number one, studying in another Nordic or Baltic country, Number two, number two, use of health serv healthcare services and supporting data exchange. And number three, versatile use of the Nordic and Baltic legal databases. So this study, which I am presenting to you, is part of the work package number two. So to give you a deeper understanding of the basis of this cost-benefit analysis, we must go a little bit back in the time. So in 2021, KBMG conducted a baseline study examining the current state of the data exchange in the different Nordic and Baltic countries involved. involved. So focusing on all three work packages, where the need for, for further research was identified focusing on healthcare services. So this study aims to deepen the understanding of the cost, cost and benefits of the healthcare data exchange between the Nordic and Baltic countries, focusing on certain high traffic locations. So here you can see the areas for close collaboration examined in the study. So the areas are Öresund region in Sweden and in Denmark, Valga and Valga twin cities in Latvia and Lithuania, and Helsinki and Tallinn area, and up north, Torne Valley region at the border of Sweden and Finland. 
So as a cross-border data exchange is especially vital in these border regions where the nearest healthcare facility may be located on the other side of the border. There is often an increased amount of collaboration between the two countries, clinical groups and hospitals. So the scope of the use cases was divided into two sections where the planned healthcare and un unplanned healthcare, which formed form the content of this study. So the planned care could refer to intentionally traveling to access cheaper healthcare services in another country and the unplanned care to an emergency or sudden need for healthcare during a stay in another country. So here you can see the cost and benefits divided into different categories. So this cost benefit analysis has a quite unique characteristics. So the cost and benefits are expressed in monetary in non-monetary units, like they usually are, usually are in this kind of analysis. So the cost and cost are oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> the cost are represented as a barriers for the future development, and the benefits are expressed as a user needs and existing experiences benefits. So, oh. There you go. So in this study, the information gathering was performed first through the reviewing existing research and material from public sources. So also we conduct, conducted additional expert interviews. So the interviews were performed in two of the chosen areas of close cross-border collaboration, Torne Valley and Öresund area. So the interview participants were all from either Finland or Sweden, and the backgrounds varied from senior physicists to different manager and, and coordinator roles related to cross-border collaboration. So next, I will present uh, types of mobility here. Uh, so I pre present the types of mobility in the areas of clo close cross-border co collaboration. So we have identified four different types of the mobility in the areas of close cross-border collaboration. So first one is the consuming goods and services. So one of the most significant differences within the areas of clo close cross-border collaboration is its geographical location. So in the more rural areas, the low population density, long distances and low level of infrastructure have resulted in a need for a closer collaboration between the countries to provide all necessary services in the area. So because of the long distances, having to cross the border to reach the nearest grocery store, school or healthcare center or other necessary services, it's much more common than in the more urban areas. So second, the family ties, relationships, and the property ownerships. So all the exam areas are linked together by cultural, cultural and economic ties, often because of long and mutual history. So therefore, having a family or property across the border was mentioned as some of the key reasons for cross-border mobility in all areas. Uh, third one is studying across the border. So it was mentioned as one of the key reasons for cross-border mobility, especially in the northern areas around the twin cities of Tornio and Haaparanda. And the fourth, fourth one is working across the border. And it is one of the key reasons behind the cross-border mobility in all areas examined. And therefore, the concept of cross-border commuting is a large factor in the collaboration between all countries. So the cross-border commuters are covered by the social security system of the country of employment. So therefore, the cross-border commuters are entitled to the medical treatment in both countries under the same condition as the persons insured in those countries. And in addition to the phenomenon of mobility, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic had a widespread effect on cross-border mobility and especially commuting since different countries allowed access on different, often very restricted, very restricted grounds. And even the definition of essential worker was often interpreted differently by different countries. So even during the periods when cross-border commuting was allowed, restrictions and, re 
and required procedures upon entry caused frustration among the commuters. So next, about the cross-border use of healthcare services. So with respect to the planned and unplanned care, in the EU, patients have a right to use the closest healthcare services regardless of the country of residence. So it is worth noting that in this respect, that is some of in some sparsely populated areas, there is a high degree of collaboration with, between the emer emergency services of the different countries. So the collaboration requires active participation of both ambulance and emer emergency centers, since if there are no units to respond on the side of the border where the call originated from. So it needs to be transferred to the neighboring country. Uh, the, de the, de de <laughs> the decree to which cross-border healthcare services are utilized varies between the examined areas, so especially regarding the planned care. As previously mentioned, cross-border commuters have a right to utilize the healthcare services within the bo both their country of employment and country of residence. So, however, there were no official numbers available from any area to de determine how common it is for a cross-border commuter to utilize healthcare services in the country of, em of employment. Uh, we have observed that common reasons for cross-border commuting are the use of private uh, dental care or specialist services. However, with regards to planned public health care, it is not as common for people to travel as across the border for these purposes. Uh, language barriers are one of the key issues affecting the attractiveness of planned cross-border health care, as may create delay in the treatment. And on the other hand, this does not hold true if the healthcare providers are vested with adequate language skills on both sides, like in Valga and Valga area. So proceeding to the next topic, we will present the areas of close cross-border collaboration in further detail. So first in order, the Torneo Valley area is the border region between Torneo and Finland, uh, Torneo in Finland and Halparanda in Sweden. So the close proximity, proximity of these cities has an impact on working across the border, which has always been common to this area. So however, there is no updated statistics available of the information about the exact numbers of individuals employed across the border. Therefore, we make an estimation on the basis of the 2015 study when this movement has been last recorded. So on estimation, the number of individuals working across the border is at between two to 5,000. Uh, in addition to cross-border commuting, purchasing goods and services, owning property and family ties are among the most important reasons for cross-border mobility in the area. So as previously explained, also in this area, the cross-border use of healthcare services is common in the use of private healthcare services, especially in the dental care or specialist services. So using the public healthcare services across the border for planet care is less common. So possibly affecting the movement, it should be noted that the e-prescription is not yet in use between Finland and Sweden. And according to our expert interviews, it is not possible to utilize the electronic pres prescription within a country and in a cross-border commuter context only if he commuter has a temporary social security number. So next, uh, we will introduce the Öresund region, which refers to the areas of eastern Denmark and Skåne in southern Sweden and connected by the Öresund bridge. So working across the border increased quickly during the decade after a bridge was opened in 2000. So peaking at around 2000 individuals and has since leveled around 18,000 to 200 commuters annually. So as an area of collaboration, the Erzund region differs from tightly integrated twin cities, where the everyday life tends to be revolve around working, living and consuming services on both sides of the border to a much greater degree. So region is densely populated on both sides of the border and the distances between, between cities are shorter compared to the Torneville area. 
So due to this, this there has been no need for a close collaboration with, be, between the countries to share limited resources. Um, according to our interview pa participants, there is rarely a need to travel across the border for healthcare, since all the necessary services are easily available on the both side of the border. Third is the Helsinki and Tallinn connection which despite of the regular ferry traffic differs from previously assessed areas. So the extensive amounts of commuting and other travel between Finland and Estonia connected the two cities and have resulted in a great deal of collaboration within the two countries. So as a result, there is a lot of collaboration between the two countries. These countries are the only countries under the study that successfully share the e-prescription information. And lastly, uh, twin cities Valka and Valka are, are located in the border area between southern Estonia and northern Latvia. Uh, these cities are much more integrated than any other areas examined in the study, as the collaboration extends also to education, culture and health related matters. So within the healthcare sector in this area, Estonia manages the hospital that provide healthcare services to inhabitants in, he, in this area. So these services are effectively, effectively provided in both languages, irrespective whether the care is emergency care or planned care. So we would like to point out that according to EU Commission study from 2021, such, such an extensive collaboration in bordering areas have various positive impacts for individuals living in such areas, as it is the most efficient solution. So to sum up, uh, understanding uh, the current forms of collaboration and future needs in these areas can offer valuable insights for the future development of cross-border data exchange. We have identified two main characteristics with the respect to cross-border healthcare. So first, uh, cross-border data exchange within the healthcare sector is not extensive. Finland and Estonia are the only two countries in the study currently exchanging the e-prescription information. And other than that, there are no other forms of healthcare data shared between any of the countries included in this study. And the only way to transfer the patient information between countries is to make a formal request for information and have the other country's healthcare center or hospital manually transfer it. And according to our expert interviews, Transferring healthcare information between different information systems, even within the country's borders, is currently very difficult. So, which could partially explain the general slow pace in implementing cross border solutions. And second, uh, there are different forms of collaboration between these areas. So even though Estonia and Latvia are currently not exchanging the e-prescription information or patient summaries, the Volga, Volga area is still presents the most advanced example of collaboration in terms of cross-border access to care. In this area, citizens from both countries are able to use shared healthcare services in full and in their own native languages. So in the sparsely populated Torne Valley area, most of the collaboration between Finland and Sweden has focused on sharing limited resources. So in terms of healthcare, the emergency services from both countries collaborate closely to ensure patient safety and efficiently deliver the services in the whole area. So despite having a little healthcare related collaboration other otherwise, Finland and Estonia are current, currently the only two of the Nordic and Baltic countries that exchange the e-prescription information. So in the e Öresund region, there is a little healthcare related collaboration between Sweden and Denmark. So since this area includes several larger cities on both sides of the border, there is generally no need to travel across the border for health healthcare. And however, according to our interview participants, closer cl collaboration and sharing services could be beneficial, especially in the terms of different specialist services. And next, uh, I would like to give the floor to my colleague Katarina, who will be discussing about the cost and benefits related to the cross-border healthcare setting. 
Yes. So hi everyone, my name is Katarina van Wert and uh, I'll be taking over from here. So... There we go. <laughs> yes, so um, in this section we'll go over the key benefits we identified when studying these areas of close cross-border collaboration that Erika just presented. And um, in addition to the benefits, we'll also look at some key barriers still slowing down, limiting or preventing cross-border data exchange in the Nordic and Baltic countries. And finally, I'll present the key conclusions from our analysis. So in order to explore both barriers as well as the development that would be required in order to successfully exchange healthcare information, we reviewed the current state and future plans of data exchange in the different countries. And in addition to this, we looked at the key EU level initiatives and proposals that affect cross-border exchange of healthcare data and the two key ones are briefly introduced on this slide. So the Health Digital Service Infrastructure, or EHDSI, is a central service for cross-border health data exchange between the EU countries. And uh, the service infrastructure enables the exchange of e-prescriptions and patient summaries uh, electronically between the EU countries through national contact points. And joining the EHDSI has so far been voluntary, which may partially explain its slow adoption through Europe. And then the European Health Data Space is a new proposal from May 2022 for a regulation which would better address specific challenges to electronic health data access and sharing. And the general objective of the EHDS is to ensure that natural persons in the EU have an increased control over their electronic health data. And the EHDS would also promote better exchange and access to different types of electronic health data. And here we have summarized the current state in each country. Um, the countries in scope for this analysis are listed in blue and the rest of the countries in grey. And as of December 2022, all Nordic and Baltic countries have committed to both setting up a national contact point and implementing either e-prescription or patient summary services or both. But while uh, Finland and Estonia are currently sharing e-prescription information, patient summaries are not yet exchanged between any Nordic or Baltic countries. And then moving on to the key barriers. So previous studies have identified a number of factors preventing, slowing down or constraining cross-border data exchange. And um, utilizing the European interoperability framework, the key remaining barriers identified in this study were linked to technical and legal interoperability issues. So in the framework, um, legal interoperability refers to ensuring organizations are able to work together, although they are operating under different legal frameworks, policies and strategies. Uh, however, many of the countries involved still lack national or supplementary legislation that would support cross-border health care data exchange. And then um, technical interoperability uh, covers the applications and infrastructures linking the systems and services. And um, the levels of technical capability still fluctuate between countries in terms of national and local systems required to produce and use internationally interoperable data. And therefore, many countries have identified the readiness and synchronization across the different countries as a key challenge for developing cross-border healthcare data exchange. And then on to the benefits. So both the expected and the experienced benefits of cross-border uh, exchange of healthcare data have been studied on several occasions over the recent years. And uh, these studies provided a pretty comprehensive overview from both professional and individual citizens' perspective. So in this study, we set out to explore the needs and um, expected benefits for both healthcare professionals as well as citizens 
focusing our study to the specific areas of close cross-border collaboration. And um, according to both previous studies and our interviews, patient safety would be improved if some of the patient's medical history at least were available to the care provider across country borders. Um, it would also make it easier to provide quality care, which would help increase trust and result in better service. Especially in the areas where distances are long and emergency services need to collaborate closely, the ability to share information between the country's responding units and hospitals would be crucial for improving uh, patient safety in the field. Then access to e-prescriptions, on the other hand, uh, could help reduce the number of errors concerning medication purchased abroad and uh, offer overall better medication safety, as well as a better commitment to medical treatment abroad. And then uh, developing cross-border uh, healthcare data exchange would also improve the overall accessibility of cross-border mobility for all groups, um, also for those with disabilities or chronic conditions that require regular moni monitoring or um, medication. So um, in addition to improving access to safe healthcare, cross-border exchange of healthcare data could help reduce costs by limiting unnecessary double tests and scans. In all the examined areas in this study, there were well-established, although manual, processes for treating patients from both sides of the border, um, including processes for receiving the necessary information from their country of origin. So direct access to at least some information could be a general improvement to the process and um, a potential way to reduce the amount of administrative work and therefore also costs. So then, as a quick recap, um, in this section, we've gone over the current state of cross-border data exchange in the Nordic and Baltic countries, and then the related EU-level initiatives, um, as well as the identified barriers and benefits that I just went over, um, and they've been kind of summarized here. But moving on to our conclusions, so first of all, uh, we found that there appears to be an increased need for cross-border exchange of healthcare data in the areas of close cross-border collaboration. So these areas share many characteristics, but as we have identified in our analysis, there are a number of factors that affect the amount and the nature of cross-border mobility, as well as the collaboration between the countries. So in the areas where distances are long and population density is lower, countries need to collaborate more closely and share resources to provide all necessary services. And um, the extensive collaboration between the ambulance services of Finland, Sweden and Norway in the Torne Valley, and then the collaboration between Estonia and Latvia around the Valka, Valga region are um, great examples of such collaboration. And then in the more urban areas, such as the Öresund region or between Helsinki and Tallinn, there are no similar needs for collaboration and sharing resources. But since there's a significant amount of cross-border commuting also in these areas, um, and since the commuters are entitled to utilize healthcare systems also in their countries of employment, it can be concluded that cross-border exchange of healthcare information would provide significant improvements to the citizens in these areas as well. So therefore, um, despite regional differences, we found that there is an increased need for cross-border exchange of healthcare data and overall access to healthcare services um, in these examined areas. And um, since similar areas for close cross-border collaboration have been identified between many other European countries, um, it implies that there may be a more substantial need for cross-border exchange of healthcare data across um, the EU than may be expected. And uh, this is especially likely if the previous estimates or needs have been heavily based on use cases related to tourism. And then um, as our second conclusion, we found that the benefits to be gained from cross-border exchange of healthcare data are clear and supported by previous research. 
So the benefits to be gained have been studied on several occasions, as mentioned, and in accordance with the results of this study, it has been clear for some time that there is a strong need for exchanging healthcare information between the Nordic and Baltic countries. And um, most cited benefits include improved patient safety and quality of care, as well as patient access to care. And additionally, improved cross-border exchange of healthcare data could result in cost savings due to a decrease in manual processes, um, as well as in the form of not needing to perform unnecessary double tests. And then moving on to our third conclusion, um, which is that current state of cross-border data exchange still varies by country, especially due to legal and technological barriers. So Finland and Estonia are currently the only countries sharing prescription information and patient summaries are not exchanged between any Nordic or Baltic countries at this point. Uh, previous studies have recognized that there are still a number of barriers preventing or slowing down cross-border data exchange. And uh, the key remaining barriers, as mentioned, are related to legal and technological interoperability. Um, then on to our final conclusion, which is that Continued strong Nordic and Baltic collaboration could help address some of the barriers we just identified. And um, when it comes to comparing the identified costs and benefits, many of the barriers could be better addressed if there was a stronger mandate for the countries to direct resources into the development. So um, depending on the level of maturity of national information systems, the development required of each country to reach common standards and compatibility may demand um, much stronger prioritization in terms of resource allocation than what has been done so far. So um, implementing the eHDSI has so far been based on voluntary action, which may explain its slow adap uh, adaptation across countries. Um, even if the benefits of the cross-border data exchange may, might have been clear. So this can imply that if the regulation for the European health data space does go into effect, um, some of the identified barriers could be significantly reduced. But this further underlines the need for strong Nordic and Baltic collaboration, such as the coordination work done by the Nordic eHealth Network, um, this sort of collaboration is essential for not only making cross-border mobility and daily life easier for citizens, but also for finding a common voice um, among the Nordic and Baltic countries to share knowledge and to contribute to EU-level discussions as an integrated region. But um, this concludes our presentation of the results. I'd like to thank you for our part, and if you have any questions or comments, please post them into the chat as instructed, and I uh, will be happy to answer them to our best ability a bit later on. Thank you so much, uh, Erika and Katarina, for the, uh, presenting those uh, very interesting results of this analysis. And I think we were all surprised at how much people are actually moving across borders in these hotspots. But let us hear from our work package one in the project, studying in another Nordic and Baltic country and how they uh, react to, to the information that was presented. So please, Rika, the floor is yours. Thank you, Minna. And first of all, thank you for giving this opportunity to comment from the student's perspective. Um, uh, as it was uh, mentioned in the cost-benefit analysis, uh, the studying is one of the, the main reasons for mobility, as in this quota was nicely mentioned. And then, um, uh, if we take a look at this picture here, uh, the many of the identified hotspots um, between Nordic and Baltic countries uh, are the same uh, in the student mobility as well. And if we look at, uh, for example, uh, at the number of uh, higher education graduates uh, in the Nordic and Baltic countries, we get an idea of the potential uh, student mobility. 
and this uh, statistics is from 2020. So the vol volumes of the annual student mobility in higher education, for example, um, are of course not very large. But uh, in recent years, for example, in another Nordic country, um, there were around uh, uh, eight to nine uh, hundred uh, thousand, sorry, thousand students annually moving, uh, according to our baseline study. And the most popular uh, directions uh, of uh, student mobility in higher education, for example, have been uh, uh, from Norway to Denmark and from Finland to Sweden and Latvia to Denmark and Estonia to Finland in 2020, where we have the statistics here. Just to give an idea uh, about how many students there uh, are. Uh, in the area, for example, in higher education. And then um, in, our work packet, in our work package, we focus on the study data and what benefits uh, uh, it, it can be achieved from, from the, its reliable digital availability. Uh, when moving to another country uh, for studies, a student must, uh, needs, needs to transfer personal information uh, across borders and between uh, different systems and databases. Uh, benefits mentions, mentioned uh, in the report also applies to students' daily life, as, as uh, seen in this, in this uh, slide. For example, uh, when a student uh, with a health condition that needs, uh, requires regular treatment or uh, follow-up uh, goes to study in another country, the availability of the student's uh, prescriptions and patient information is in the destination country is uh, quite important. And uh, up-to-date information of the student's uh, state of the health and medication uh, is also important, for example, uh, if student suddenly has to be hospitalized in the destination country. Um, so I assume that um, uh, these aspects are somewhat important when a student, uh, con students are considering studying um, abroad. Uh, in addition, I hope that no one misses the op opportunity to, uh, to, to study abroad because taking care of their uh, own health and well-being uh, in the destination country could be difficult or impossible due to, due to challenges of the information flow. So the smooth uh, cross-border transfer of students' uh, uh, health information as well as the study information will hopefully encourage mobility and most of all guarantee the equal opportunities for all students that are considering the study abroad. So that's my perspective I wanted to bring, bring to this discussion. So thank you. Any questions or questions uh, in the chat? Maybe I can answer later. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Rika, and it was very interesting to hear hear about the uh, mobility also of, of students. And uh, I think a very very important part of this uh, is considering the equal opportunities and how important it is to uh, that the health health data can be moved from country to country. Unfortunately, we didn't get any questions or, or comments at this point, but of course you are welcome also to send them later on. Um, the full report, uh, as well as the link to the recording of this event, will be sent to you um, in a in couple of weeks, I would see, at, at, at latest. But uh, at the same time, I, when I want to thank you all for, for participating to this event, I would just like to share some of the upcoming uh, next steps in the project. What is going to happen next is uh, we are going to have a workshop in, in Tallinn in August 21st, 22nd, where we will hear about the success stories and challenges in the implementation of e-prescription. So please mark your calendars and I will uh, be sending the invitations out in a, in a couple of weeks. And. Uh, since it's the third implementation year of this project, uh, we are approaching the end. And at the end of, a, of the project, uh, we will be uh, publishing a handbook on the cross-border data exchange in the Nordic and, and Baltic countries, where we want to share the results and lessons learned during our project, so you can use them in your own work when you are implementing cross-border data exchange. 
But at this point, uh, I would thank you, like to thank you for your attention and uh, please feel free to contact me at any point if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.